Welcome to this video session. I remain Samuel Chupu Emeka, aka Sandon for Peace. In this video session, we shall solve and check. We shall solve and check uh, several types of equations. Uh, the equations that have uh, negative exponents, uh, equations with negative exponents, Uh, we shall also solve uh, equations with fractional exponents. Equations with fractional fractional exponents. Okay. We shall also solve uh, higher order equations. Higher order equations. Higher order. Equations We shall also solve uh, radical equations Radical equations So uh, we shall solve equations uh, That we, the higher order equations that we shall solve uh, We shall not use the uh, rational zero theorem. No. Uh, we shall solve higher order equations, those that can be solved by factoring or grouping. Okay? Those that can be solved by factoring and or grouping. Okay? Grouping. So, uh, later on, we shall discuss equations we shall solve and check if, uh, higher order equations that can be solved by rational zero theorem. But for this video, which the higher order equations that we shall solve are the ones that can be solved by factoring and grouping. So, uh, before you continue with this video, it is very important that you know factoring, okay, that you know factoring, that you know exponents, laws of exponents and factoring. Uh, it's also important that you know how to solve quadratic trinomial, uh, very important. So I have done videos on exponents, I have done it on factoring is a whole lot on factoring. Uh, is a video playlist, okay, and also on a quadratic trinomial. All those videos are on my website. It is very important that you understand those prerequisites prior to solving this, okay? So we have a bunch of questions. We shall start. We shall get started. Uh, the first one we have here e minus 3 exponent 3 over 4 this is question 1 equal to 8 ok so solve and check for p so the first thing you really want to do ok is to look at that exponent multiply the exponents by 4 over 3 multiply the exponents by 4 over 3 uh, multiply the exponents on both sides by 4 over 3 and you're doing that so that you can because you're solving for the variable you want to isolate the variable so this will be p minus 3 3 over 4 times 4 over 3 and because this is an equation, whatever you do to the left-hand side, you have to do to the right-hand side. So this means 8, 4 over 3. 
So you see that this crosses out and we have that P minus 3 is this actually from the exponents, laws of exponents this means cube root of 8 all raised to power 4 that is, that is what it means from the laws of exponents so this will be P minus 3 equal to because fractional exponents gives you radicals fractional exponents gives you radicals I did that in the videos on the laws of exponents so cube root of 8 is 2 2 raised to power 4 so P minus 3 is 16 and we have that P will be 16 plus 3 P is equal to 19 okay now let us check this let's check it I'm going to write check and as usual in checking your work you have to write you have to check from the main equation you do not check from the modified equation you have to check from the main equation so I write the main equation p minus 3 3 to the fourth equal to 8 left hand side right hand side so the left hand side you have p minus 3 all raised to power 3 over 4 right hand side you have 8 so I just substitute this 19 minus 3 raised to power 3 over 4 and that will give me 16 raised to the power 3 over 4 okay and this means what? this means the fourth root of 16 all exponent cube that is what it means fourth root of 16 all cubed so this will be fourth root of 16 is 2 2 cubed is 8 so 8 on the left 8 on the right you can drink some water not beer drink some water <laughs> okay does that make sense do you understand it okay anyone i do here i cross it off uh, the next question we have here we have k exponent negative 2 minus k exponent negative 1 minus 56 is equal to 0 okay so you look at this one uh, you, you look at this you are kind of asking okay how do I do this I mean uh, if it was integer exponents if it was a quadratic equation I believe you can do it but this one is you know it has a fraction uh, it has a negative exponent so whenever you see an equation with a negative exponent you want to figure out how you can make your life easier right uh, the essence of mathematics is to make life easier right <laughs> okay so uh, you want to see whether you can do any substitution okay you want to do any time you see uh, an equation with a uh, negative exponent like this now if you see something like this you know kind of like this then you just multiply the exponents but if you see uh, more than one term and you see more than one term and you see that each individual term has a negative exponent for this and this you try to do any substitution you want you, you, you want to make a substitution so what we could say is we can say let v be k to the negative one okay let our v be k to the negative one so in that case in that case we could now say this uh, actually before you say this before you say this and you want to kind of write it like this if you have k negative 1 2 minus k negative 1 minus 56 equal to 0 now someone might ask me why did you say let v be k to the negative 2 
Well, you really want to start with the simplest, so that when you multiply it, when you multiply it like this, you know, it, because if from the laws of exponents, this gives you k to the negative two. So you want to see how you can simplify it. Then you substitute for the simplest to make it easier for you. Okay. So we now say let b be k to the negative one. Uh, yeah. Any time, any time at all, you see equations like this that has uh, negative exponents. Okay. You want to do some substitution to make it simpler. So once we now have this, we can now see that this means b squared minus b minus 56 equal to 0. You see, I have now made it simpler to be a quadratic equation. Okay? So now we now factorize. Please, we now do factoring. View the videos I did on factoring. Okay? Uh, we will not be, I will not petition you these are the prerequisite videos factoring so to make this easier for us now negative 56 times 1 is negative 56 b squared okay 1 and negative 56 will not work negative 1 and 56 will not work 2 and negative 28 will not work negative 2 and 28 will not work 3 will not work 4 and negative 1, 4, 16, 14, right? 4 and negative 14 will not work. Negative 4 and 14 will not work. 5 will not work. 6 will not work. 7 and negative 8. 7 and negative 8. 7 and negative 8 will work. Okay? And because this here is, because this is a, because the coefficient of this is 1, we can just write b plus 7, b minus a is zero. Okay, so from the uh, from the zero product property, from zero product property, b will be negative seven or or b minus a is zero, b is a. Now you don't stop here. No, you do not stop here. Now recall that you made a substitution. Recall that you made a substitution here. So recall that our v is k to the negative 1. This was the main equation. So in this case, when our v is negative 7, so this is v, k to the negative 1 is v. When v is negative 7, k to the negative 1 will be negative 7. Are you with me? Do you understand? Now, from the laws of exponents, the videos on the laws of exponents, okay, a base with a negative exponent is a reciprocal of the same base with the corresponding positive exponent and vice versa. Okay? So 1 over k is negative 7. So 1 is negative 7k. Negative 7k is 1. So k is negative 1 over 7. Not 1 over negative 7, no. Okay, the negative should not be below. The negative should be at the numerator. Okay? It's the same thing, but we don't want negative to be at the denominator. Negative 1 over 7. Or, we also have that k to the negative 1 is 8. In this case, 1 over k to the 1. Because this means 1 over k to the 1. That is what it means. Okay? Which is still k. Okay, this is 1 is equal to 8k, 8k is 1, so k is 1 over 8. Another videos you need to view, linear equations. Linear equations playlist, you need to view that. So, this is our k here, the two values. Do we stop here? No. We have to do what? Check our work. And we have to do what? Check from the main equation. We have to check from the main equation. So, 
I write my check, then uh, my left hand side, let me go ahead and write my left hand side and right hand side. My right hand side is 0, the left hand side is k to the negative 2 minus k to the negative 1 minus 56. So I will first of all check with k equal to negative 1 over 7. Let me do this first. So this means negative 1 over 7 all to the negative 2 minus negative 1 over 7 all to the negative 1 minus 56. Okay, are you with me? Now, uh, with this, you know, let me just, uh, you know, we can do it step by step. There are several ways we can do this. Uh, we can also do it this way. 1 over negative 1 over 7 all squared. Okay, I can teach you another way to do this. Okay, but this is probably the easiest way you want to do it. Okay, this means 1 over negative 1 over 7 all squared. A base with a negative exponent is the reciprocal of the same base with the corresponding positive exponent. A base with a negative exponent is the reciprocal. Reciprocal means 1 over. The reciprocal of the same base but with the corresponding positive exponent. And vice versa. A base with a positive exponent, you know, if you have 2 cubed, it means 1 over 2 raised to power negative 3. A base with a positive exponent is the reciprocal of the same base with the corresponding negative exponent. A base with a negative exponent, the base is 2. The exponent is negative. Is the reciprocal of the same base but with the corresponding positive exponent. We taught this in the videos on exponents. Okay? So, uh, this will be minus 1 over negative 1 over 7 raised to the power 1 minus 56. Okay, so this will be 1 over this negative 1 over 7. If I want to show my work times negative 1 over 7, okay, minus 1 over negative 1 over 7, minus 56, okay? So we know that the right hand side is 0. Let's just finish the left hand side. So this will be 1 over 1 over 49. Are you with me? Okay, one, negative times negative is positive. 1 over 7 times 1 over 7 is 1 over 49. Minus, minus, I mean, because this is like saying minus, minus, 1 over 7, 1 over 1 over 7. Okay, minus 56. Minus 56. So actually, this is what this means. If you, I don't want you to get confused. Minus 56. Okay, now this is what this means. 1 divided by, because they, this is the division bar here. This long one is the division bar. This means 1 divided by 1 over 49 minus 1 divided by negative 1 over 7 minus 56. That is what it means. So when you convert division to multiplication, you flip the fraction on the right hand side. So this is 1 times 49 over 1 minus 1 times negative 7 over 1 minus 56. So this is 49 minus minus 7 minus 56, which is 49 plus 7 minus 56, which is 56 minus 56, which is 0. Okay? So 0 on the left, 0 on the right, we can jump up, right? Okay, we need to check for uh, 1 over 8. We need to check for both of them to make sure that we are right. So we come over here to check for 1 over 8. Still on the left hand side. 
Still on the left hand side, this case k is equal to 1 over 8. So this will be 1 over 8 exponent negative 2 minus 1 over 8 exponent negative 1 minus 56. Okay, so this is 1 over 1 over 8 all squared minus 1 over 1 over 8 all raised to power 1 minus 56. So this will give us 1 over 1 over 64. 1 squared is 1, 8 squared is 64. Minus 1 over 1 over 8 minus 56. So from what we did here, you could see that this is 64 minus 8 minus 56. And that will give you 56 minus 56, which is 0. Okay? So it works. Okay? All right. Let's do question three. We knocked out this one. Uh, question three, we have, uh, we have this radical equation here. Square root of two x plus seven plus square root of x plus 3 equal to 1. So, I think I solved something like this in uh, the radical equations uh, in the, one of the radical one of the videos in the radical equations I did. I solved something like this. Okay, now if you have with radical equations, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. When you have uh, actually, uh, let's do like let's do a simpler one. Oh, let's go ahead and do this one. That's fine. When you have, uh, when you have two radical, when you have, if you have a radical, if you have just one radical, this is the radical. Okay. If you have only one radical, make sure it is by itself. You want the radicals not to be on the same side of the equation. You don't want that. Okay. If you have one radical. Let it be by itself. Uh, and in that case, you could you will just have to square. Like if the radical is just square root. Okay? You just have to square. Square one time. If you have only one radical, most likely you will just square only one time. But if you have two radicals, like you have now, you have two radicals. Okay, first of all, the radicals should be, should not, both radicals should not be on the same side of the equation. One has to be the other side. Then you will have to square two times. Just take note of that. Okay? If you have one radical, you have to square only one time to eliminate the radical. If you have two radicals, you have to square two times. And make sure that in either case, both radicals are on different sides of the equation. If it's the case of one radical, make sure it is just on one side, on the left-hand side of the equation. In the case of two radicals, make sure one is on the left and the other one is on the right. If you solve this like this, you're looking for trouble. You can still solve it like this, but that will be much, much work. So, you just want to go ahead, push the other radical to the other side, and you have to square both times. So, let's push this over here. So, um, the radicals I mean is the square roots, okay? So, this is 2x, square root of 2x plus 7 equal to 1 minus square root of x plus 3. Okay, so, square both sides the first time, okay? Square both sides. Square both sides. So you now have square root of 2x plus 7 all squared is equal to 1 minus square root of x plus 3 all squared. Now I tell you something that students do that is not funny. Okay. Now, of course, this one, square, square of this square root, the square of the square root of a number is the number. 
Okay. The square root of the square of a number is the number. It could be a number, it could be a variable. Okay. The square of the square root of a term is that term. Similarly, the square root of the square of a term is that term. Now, so this is 2x plus 7. Okay, no problem with that. I tell you what some students do, which you should avoid. 1 minus this, they will just say 1 squared minus radical 3 all squared. They write this. Can you imagine this? This is wrong. And you can ask me why is it wrong? Okay. So, uh, when students ask me why it is wrong, this is what I ask them. <laughs> so, it's good I point out these mistakes so you don't make it. Now, let me ask you something. Eh? Would you would you would you do this in arithmetic? If you have five minus two all squared, would you say uh, five squared minus two squared? Would you do that? <laughs> so, because five minus two all squared, how would you do this? This is three squared, right? Which is nine. Okay, five squared is twenty-five minus four, which is what uh, twenty-one. Okay. They are not the same thing. So, if you cannot do it in arithmetic, you cannot do it in algebra. Algebra came from arithmetic. If you cannot do it with numbers, you can't do it with variables. No. So, anytime, anytime you're solving algebra, anytime at all, you're solving algebra, and you do something, and you're not really sure, Hey, am I sure this is right? Try to do that same thing with arithmetic. If it doesn't work in arithmetic, it won't work in algebra, period. Another thing that students do is this. Maybe they say uh, 2x minus 4 over 2. Let's say 2x minus, uh, 2x minus 5 over 2. And they will come here. They'll come here and they do this. And then the answer x minus 5. Mathematics is not magic. Okay? Folks, we are not dealing with magic. <laughs> okay? You don't do that. You ask yourself, ask yourself this. Well, can you do this? 2 times 3 minus 5 over 2. Can you do this? So 3 minus 5 to be negative 2. Because they come, they come here, they write x minus 5. Would you? If you have 2 times 3 minus 5, would you not do 6 minus 5? Order of operations, which is 1, then over 2. The answer is now 1 over 2. So, if you cannot do this with arithmetic, you cannot do it with algebra. Okay? Take note of that, please. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Take note of that. So, So I've seen because I am saying this because I have seen students do it. Okay. Now uh, this means this is foil. You foil it. This means one minus radical x plus three times one minus radical x plus three. Okay. You foil it. So we now have that two x plus seven is equal to. Uh, 1 squared is 1 minus 1 times radical x plus 3 is radical x plus 3 minus radical x plus 3 times 1 is minus 1 radical x plus 3. If you want to put 1 here, 1 here, that's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. Okay? But I'm not going to do that. I mean, instead of saying 1x, I will just say x. So, but if you want to put 1 here, put 1 here. That's fine with me. Now, minus radical x plus 3 minus times times minus radical x plus 3. What I'm doing now is FOIL. FOIL method. FOIL, multiplying binomials. Okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, binomials, please view the videos on multiplying polynomials. Multiplying binomials. You need the knowledge. Okay? 
So you see, mathematics has a rippling effect, right? This topic needs prior topic. Prior knowledge of that topic. That other topic needs prior knowledge of another topic. Okay, this is plus, minus times minus is plus. Radical x plus 3, all squared. So we now have that this is 2x plus 7 equal to 1. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Radical x plus 3. If you did not understand what I did here now, minus p minus p is minus 2p. View my videos on adding and subtracting variables. Adding and subtracting variables. Plus, this is x plus 3. Okay? Alright, so uh, let me get the radical like I yes, said, let get the radical to left hand side. Take every other guy out to the right. So this will be 2 radical x plus 3 is 1 plus x plus 3 minus 2x minus 7. Okay? So we have that 2 radical x plus 3 is x minus 2x is minus x. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 minus 7 is minus 3. Are you guys with me? Okay? Minus x, minus 3. Now, we have to do what? Square both sides again. Square both sides again. This is the second time. You have any, if you see two radicals, you will square two times. So this means 2 square root of x plus 3 all squared equal to minus x minus 3 all squared. Okay, now this means 2 squared times radical x plus 3 all squared. This is laws, law of exponents. Laws of exponents equal to, you fold this, spoil it, minus x minus 3 times minus x minus 3. Okay? So this will be 4 times x plus 3. Okay, 4 times x plus 3. Equal to minus x times minus x is x squared. Minus x times minus 3 is plus 3x. Minus 3 times minus x is plus 3x. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. So we got here 4x plus 12 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay? Right? Let's move everything here. So 0 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 4x minus 12. I don't like dealing with negatives. That's why I moved it. And later on I will swap it. I don't like dealing with because if I move it over here, this will be minus x squared. So try to avoid dealing with negatives. Okay? The same thing, that was why I, I saw negative here. I had to move it over here. If this was positive, I will move I will move this ones here. Then let then after that I'll swap it. Swapping means let your left be let your left hand be your right hand. And let your right hand be your left hand. Okay, because it's an equation, you can always swap. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. 5 is equal to 2 plus 3. Okay, view the videos I did on linear equations. You will understand the way I move things here. So, 0 is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 4x is plus 2x. Plus 9 minus 12 is minus 3. Okay, so x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, let's factor this. Minus 3 times x squared minus 3x squared. 1 and minus 3 will not work. Negative 1 and 3 would work. Okay? x plus 1. x minus 1. x plus 3 is equal to 0. So x minus 1 is 0. x would be equal to 1. Or x plus 3 is equal to 0 x will be equal to negative 3. Okay? Alright. Do we stop here? No. We have to do what? Check our work. We 
have to check our works. Okay, so let's check. As usual, we'll check with the main equation. So we'll check with the main equation, and we have to check with both of them. We may have an external root, an external root, Adam. Let's see. So this is our left hand side, and this is our right hand side. Yeah. Right hand side is one. Left hand side, square root of two x plus seven plus square root of x plus three. Now let's check with x equal to one. So this means that square root of two times one plus seven plus square root of 1 plus 3. So this is square root of 2 plus 7 plus square root of 4. So square root of 9 plus square root of 4. This is 3 plus 2 equal to 5. Okay, so this is no. Okay? This is not a solution to, to, this, to this radical equation. Okay, rather, we, 5 is not equal to 1. So we say that x is equal to 1 is an external root. External, external root. Okay, let's check for x equal to negative 3. Do this uh, this one quartic equation. Okay, g to the four power minus sixty five g square plus sixty four equal to zero. So this is a quartic equation, and I did some of this in that video. Uh, on equations. Uh, actually, under factoring, under factoring, you will see factoring quartic, quartic trinomials. You really need to view it. You really need to view it. The same steps, I listed the steps for factoring quadratic trinomial. Now, this is a quartic, quartic trinomial. Okay, we call it quartic because the highest degree of the variable is four. Quartic, quartic trinomial. What? Because the highest degree of the variable is 4. Uh, so, uh, this is a quartic trinomial on the left hand side. You do it exactly like a quadratic trinomial, but in this case it will be x squared x squared. Okay? It's not just like in, in quadratic trinomial it is x x. The, the two factors, you know, are x x. In the, in the quartic trinomial, it's going to be x squared, x squared. So please, uh, view that video on factoring quartic trinomials. Okay, that will make sense. Okay, whatever I've taught before is of no use teaching it all over again here. Okay, so this is just view it and you should be able to solve this. So we multiply the first and third terms, 64G4. Okay, so 1 and 64 will not work. 
Negative 1, negative 64 will work. Negative 1, negative 64 is going to give us negative 65. So remember, this will be 1g squared, negative 1g squared, and negative 64g squared. This is g4 minus g squared, okay, minus 64g squared plus 64 equal to 0. This is just what I'm, you know, kind of what I'm saying. So this is, I like doing my vertical method. Uh, you can do your horizontal method. I like doing my vertical method. And because this is quartic equation, you have four roots. Okay, you have four roots. So this is g squared, you factor by GCF. g squared, you have g squared minus one. And here, this has a leading negative. A leading negative. Whenever you have a leading negative, you um, whenever you have a leading negative, you factor out the negative first. So this is negative 64. You have g squared minus one. Okay. So this and this are the same. So you bring it out. You factor again by this here. Equal to zero. I did this vertical method. If you like, you can do it horizontal method like this. If you want, you can do this horizontal method. You can do g squared, g squared minus 1, minus 64, g squared minus 1, equal to 0. Okay? And then you factor by GCF again, because this is, this is common. This is doing it horizontal method. So now, we now have to factor by difference of two squares, okay? And it's in that video, factoring by difference of two squares. So this will be g squared minus 1 squared times g squared minus 8 squared equal to 0. So we now have, we now have, Uh, g plus 1 factoring by difference of two squares. g plus 1 times g minus 1. g plus 8. g minus 8 is equal to 0. Okay? So, g plus 1 is, you do 0 product property. 0 product property. g plus 1 is 0. g will be negative 1. g minus 1 is 0. g will be 1. G plus 8 is 0. G will be negative 8. G minus 8 is 0. G will be 8. Do you stop here? No. You have to do what? Check your work. Okay? We have to check. With Mr. C, you've got to check. Provided it is an equation or an inequality, with Mr. C, you will check. Okay? Equations, any type of equations. Inequality, any type of inequalities. You have to check your book. Okay, uh, now we have this G4, right? Okay, we have to check with the main equation. With the main equation, I will check for the four of them. For the four of them. Okay, so left hand side is this. This is our left hand side. Uh, g squared, g4 minus 65 g squared plus 64. And then right hand side is 0. Okay, so we check with negative 1. g to be negative 1. So this will be negative 1 all 4 minus 65 times negative 1 all squared plus 64. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 times negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, <laughs> times negative 1, negative 1, times negative 1 again is 1. Now, every time you have a big, and I, we, I mentioned this in the laws of exponents. If you have a negative base, negative base with a positive even exponent, 
it's always giving a positive result. Okay. I talked about it in that video, laws of exponents. You have a negative base with an even exponent. Okay? An even exponent. It will always give, give you a positive result. Okay? Now this is 1 minus 65 times 1 plus 64. So 1 minus 65 plus 64 is 0. So that works. Then you do for j equal to 1, uh, you have 1 to the 4 minus 65 times 1 squared. times 1 squared, okay, plus 64. So this is 1 minus 65 plus 64, and that gives you, G, and that gives you 0, right? You look for negative 8, G to be negative 8, you have negative 8, this to power 4, minus 65 times negative 8 all squared, plus 64. Okay, uh, I gotta multiply this now. I don't have my calculator with me. Uh, 64 times 64, uh, 16, 1, 4 times 6, 24 plus 1, 25, 4, 2, 36 plus 2, 38, right? 24, 4, 2, 36 plus 2, 38. Okay, this is 6, this is 9, 0, 4, 0, 9, 6, right? Uh, 4096 uh, minus 65 times 64 plus 64. Okay, so 4096 minus uh, 65 times 64, uh, 0, 2, 24, 26, right? Uh, 33, 36, 39, right? 4160. Am I right? 4160 minus 4160 plus 64. Okay? And this will give me negative 10 minus 6 is 4. Uh, 15 minus 9 is 6. Okay? Minus 64 plus 64. And that is 0. What? Okay? It worked. Worked, 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 worked. And 10 plus 16 plus 0, 1. Okay. So this worked. Now, g, g equal to 8 will also work. This is 8 to the 4 minus 65 times 8 squared plus 64. And that is a 4096 minus uh, 65 times 64. Plus 64. So this is 4096 minus 41960 plus 64, and that will give you 0. So what? Right? Uh, question 5 is the next one. Question 5. I don't even know how many questions we shall do here. Uh, this worked here. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, this is a. This one is a similar to the one we just did, but this is a p to the fourteenth minus eight p to the seven. Uh, plus 7 equal to 0. Okay? Okay. Uh, look at this. The same principle we, we do for uh, quadratic, the same way we do for quadratic and, quad, and quadratic trinomials. The same method is what we shall use here. So, uh, 7 times p14 is 7p14 p to the 14 1 and 7 will not work negative 1 and negative 7 will work okay negative 1 and negative 7 will work so this will be p to the 14 minus 
p to the 7 minus 7 p to the 7 plus 7 equal to 0. Okay? And let's, I like doing my radical method. You can do horizontal method if you want to. So this is p14 minus p7. You see why that video on quadratic is very important. Factoring quadratic trinomials, factoring quadratic trinomials. That is the same method I'm using. So this is p7, and this is a p7 minus 1. And this one is negative 7, and this is a p7 minus 1. Okay? Because this is negative 7 p7, divided by negative 7, is just p7. Then plus 7, divided by negative 7, is minus 1. So this is equal to this, we can dance. So p to the 7 minus 1 times p to the 7 minus 7 is equal to 0. Okay? So we do zero product property. Zero product property. Uh, this will be that p to the 7 minus 1 is 0 or p to the 7 minus 7 is 0. Okay. So here, p to the 7 is 1. p to the 7 is 1. Now, when you have an odd, okay, uh, when you have an odd exponent, because p in this case is 7 truth, you know, you take, if you want, you can do it this way, or take the 7 truth of both sides. So p to the 7 times 1 over 7 equal to 1 times 1 over 7. Do you see what I just did now? You multiply both exponents by 1 over 7, okay? Just to isolate P. Or you take the 7th root of both sides. Now, this means 7th root of 1. 7th root of 1. So P is equal to 1. P is equal to 1. Okay? Now, the next one, this one, will be the 7th root of 7. 7th root of 7. P to the 7 is equal to 7, so P will be 7th root of 7. Okay? Now, uh, this is supposed to have 14 roots, but for simplicity, for this, your level, uh, for your, for your level, okay, we are going to just keep it with these two roots here. Are you with me? We shall keep it with these two roots. Now, uh, we shall check this as well. Let's check it with the two roots. So, if we check, check uh, our left hand side and our right hand side. Our right hand side is 0. Our left hand side we have p to the 14 minus 8p to the 7 plus 7. Uh, now let's check with p equal to 1. Let's check with p equal to 1. So this is 1 to the 14 minus 8 times 1 to the 7 plus 7. So this is 1 minus 8 times 1 plus 7. And that will be 1 minus 8 plus 7. And that is 0. So 1 worked. Okay? 1 worked. Then we check with a, then we check with a seven truth of seven. Uh, left hand side. So we need p equal to seven truth of seven. Uh, this means p to the fourteen minus eight p to the seven plus seven. Uh, this is now a seven seven truth of seven all to the 14 minus 8 times 7 root of 7 to the 7 plus 7 okay now this is 7 raised to power 1 over 7 times 14 minus 8 times 7 raised to power 1 over 7 times 7 
plus 7. Okay? So, uh, laws of exponents. Laws of exponents. When you have an inside exponent and an outside exponent, you multiply them. So 7 into 7 is 1, 7 into 14 is 2. So this is 7 squared minus, uh, of course, the 7 of the 7 root, okay, just like square of square root. Yeah. Now this cancels, this is 8 times 7, then plus 7. So this is 49 minus 56 plus 7. And that is uh, negative 7 plus 7, which is 0. So this works too. Okay, you can do it. Okay. okay, folks, let's do question 6. Question 6. I want to do vari varieties. Varieties. So you can, uh, you can get, be familiar with all of them. Okay. The next one is this. Uh, 7 times the minus 1 all squared minus 57 times d minus 1 equal to negative 8 okay so you have two ways to solve this problem two ways one way is to Solve it like it is, for this, for this, and uh, use the distributive property and then solve it. The another way is to use substitution. To use substitution. Okay, and whatever you substitute, you want to substitute with with the uh, simplest form. You want to substitute with the simplest form whatever you substitute. We will do it both ways. We are going to do it both ways. Uh, just to show you that you, if you don't want to use substitution, you can also file, you can also file this binomial and then solve it usually. Okay? Uh, but I will do that the second method. Okay? Let's do the substitution first method and then we do the second method okay now the second method is the long one which is like killing a fly with a hammer <laughs> okay <laughs> okay first method and if you understand the first method then when i do the second method you know i have had some students you know i try to do several methods so that so my students will understand so I've had some students, uh, my previous students, they, when, I, when they understand the first method, when I start doing the second method, they, they close their eyes. <laughs> because they don't want, there are some students, hey, Mr. C, teach me only one method, please. Don't teach me another method because it will confuse me. Well, what about those that did not understand it the first way? You know, everybody might not understand things one way. So I accommodate everything. So, okay, first method, I will just say, let me use a substitution, okay? Let uh, P be B minus 1. Uh, because it will make it easier for me. Easier for me. So I now have this as 7P squared minus 57P equal to negative 8. Okay, see that? So it kind of makes it easier. So this will be 7p squared minus 57p plus 8 equal to 0. So we have a quadratic equation. On the left hand side is a quadratic trinomial. Okay. 8 times 7p squared, 56p squared. 1 and, 1 and 56 will not work. Negative 1 and negative 56 will work. So that is negative p squared, negative 1p squared, and negative 56p squared. That would work. So 7p squared minus p squared minus 56p squared plus 8 equal to 0. Okay, I like doing my radical method. Radical method. 
So this is 7p squared minus p squared minus 56p squared plus p. So this will be factor by GCF p squared uh, 7 minus 7p squared minus p. Ooh, not p squared. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. <laughs> okay. This is 7p squared minus p minus 56p plus 8. Okay? So I like to do it by the co method. So this is the 7p squared minus p minus 56p plus 8. Okay. Else, uh, do it by GCF, factor by GCF. So p, we have 7p minus 1. And this has a leading negative. When it has a leading negative, you factor out that negative. Please, it is very important that you view those videos. I have had some students, without the 7, they could do this. With the 7, they could not. With the 7, they could not. They mess up. Okay. In the videos I did on factoring, I listed the steps. That will solve everything. Whether there is something, whether this is 1 or not. I listed the exact steps. If you understand it that way, you can solve quadratic, you can solve quartic, you can solve any trinomial with any power, with any raised to power anything, you can, because you are using the same method. Okay? So, uh, here you have a leading negative. You factor out the negative. This is negative 8, is the GCF, and we will have what? 7p minus 1. So we have 7p minus 1 and p minus 8 equal to 0. So 7p minus 1 is 0, 7p is equal to 1, p is equal to 1 over 7. Okay? Or p minus 8 is 0 and then p is equal to 8. Okay. We do what next? Check our work. Check our work. So, we check our work. Uh, the left hand side. Now, we have not finished though. Before we check our work, let's finish this. Let's finish. Because this is in D. This is in D, and we found P. Okay, this is in D. You see, I wanted to check, and I saw D. Ooh. You see, that is, the, that, is the, that is part of the reason why you should always check with the main equation, not the modified equation. Why? The modified equation could be wrong. You have to always check. Always check with the main equation. Now, this is in P. So when I wanted to check the main equation, I saw D. That was what I said. Oh no, I've got to finish it. So recall, recall, and you're not recalling Samsung, okay? <laughs> you're just recalling this. You're not recalling Samsung Galaxy Note 7. That is not where, not, not where, not, not, that is not what we want to recall. We want to recall this. So now, P is B minus 1, right? Uh, I hope Samsung is not going to be mad at me. I'm just trying to put a little fun in mathematics so that you don't look at me like what's this guy talking about? How some students look at me? I'm not a television, I'm not a TV show. Okay, <laughs> so okay, P is D minus one. So uh, uh, D minus one is P because we want to find D. So we make we put the variable on the left hand side. Now, when p is uh, 1 over 7, we have that d minus 1 is 1 over 7. So, d will be 1 over 7 plus 1. So, d will be 1 over 7 plus 7 over 7. And d will be 8 over 7. Okay? Then, the next one, when p is 8, d minus 1 is 8 and D will be 8 plus 1 and D will be 9 uh -huh. now we can check our work 
and we have to check with both methods. And we have to check uh, for both of them. Uh, when I do the second method, I will not check because you only need to check one time. You only need to check one time. So, uh, let us check it here. subtracting fractions. You go and look at it. So this will be negative 56 over 7 and that is negative 8. So that works. Okay, that works. Now, still on the left hand side, let's check for d equal to 9. So that is 7, 9 minus 1 all squared minus 57, 9 minus 1. So this will be 7 times 8 squared minus 57 times 8. And that is 7 times 64 minus 8 times 7 is 56, 6, 5, 8 times 5, 40 plus 5, 45. Uh, 7 times 4, 28, 8, 2, 7 times 6, 42, plus 2, 44. Minus 456. Okay? And that gives you negative 8. It works. 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 Alright. Let's do this with a... Let's do this with a... Uh, second method. If you don't like this. I mean, I think this is easier. But let us do it. Second method. Whereby we just... Multiply everything and distribute and then solve. So, second method. Ah, uh, we can distribute this. So this is seven. Uh, we will foil it first before we distribute. We have to foil. Okay, before we distribute, we fall. Minus 57D plus 57 equal to negative 8. Okay? So, we fall this 7, D squared 
minus d minus d plus 1 minus 57d plus 57 plus 8 equal to 0. Okay? And that will be 7 d squared minus 2d plus 1 minus 57d. Uh, 57 plus 8 is 65. Okay, 65 equal to 0. So we distribute now because you have to remember uh, PEMDAS. PEMDAS. <coughs> Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponent, uh, multiplication, division, left to right, and then addition, subtraction, left to right. PEMDAS. Okay, now this is a 7d squared minus 14d plus 7 minus 57d plus 65 equal to 0. So this is 7d squared uh, minus 14 minus 57 is a minus uh, 7, 4 is 11, 5, 1, uh, 1. Plus 5, 6, plus 1, 7. 71 d okay. And then plus uh, 72 is equal to 0. Okay? So, uh, we can actually finish this up here. We don't need to check anymore because we checked with the first method. It's the same check. Okay, because we checked with the main equation, so. Uh, let's find out whether uh, this can be solved by factoring. I know we, we can solve it by factoring because we've already, uh, we've already gotten an answer here. Okay, but if you want to know, if you want to know, whether a quadratic equation can be solved by factoring. Uh, you find a discriminant. Now, uh, recall the quadratic formula. Uh, recall the quadratic formula. Uh, and in the quadratic formula, you have that uh, x is minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So uh, with this, this is called a discriminant. Discriminant. Okay, discriminant is a uh, b squared minus 4ac. What is here? So if this is a perfect square, if it is a perfect square, that means you can solve that by factoring. If the discriminant is zero, that means you can. Uh, it's, you can also solve it by factoring. Uh, but it will have a repeated root, okay? Uh, but it, if, if it is a perfect square, you can solve it by factoring. What do I mean by perfect squares? Uh, you have 1, uh, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 60, 4, 81, 100, 1, 2, 1, 1, 4, 4. Do you understand what I'm talking about? 1, 6, 9. Now, uh, one squared, two squared, three squared. These are what we call perfect squares. So if you do this now, I have I have to get a calculator so to save time. <coughs> a is uh, B is uh, and this is just trying to know whether you can solve it by factoring, which you should. But let's do it anyway. B is negative A. Let's start with A. A is uh, seven. B is negative 71 and C is 72. Okay? So you have B squared, negative 71 all squared, minus 4 times A, 7 times uh, 4 AC, 72. Okay? Right? So this will be uh, negative 71 all squared. Uh, will give you 5041 okay minus 
Uh, 28 times 72 is 2016. Okay? And when you subtract it, you have a 3025. If you take the square root of that, square root of 3025, uh, square root of the answer, you have 55. Okay? Square root of 3025 is 55. So you can solve this by factoring. I know we could anyway, because we solved these ones. Now, but uh, just to teach you, this is another thing I want to teach you, how you know whether you can solve something by factoring. If you find a discriminant, if it is a perfect square, okay, if you take the square root of that and it gives you a positive integer, right, then that means you can solve it by perfect square. The square root of, uh, and if you take the discriminant, if you take the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, okay, it's 3025. Then you take, if you take the square root, this 3025 is a perfect square, which means if you take the square root, which means if you take the square root of that, it gives you a positive integer. So you can solve this by factoring. Now, let's find the factors. Uh, 72 times 7 is 504. Section 504. Okay, 72 times 7 is 504. Now, uh, let's look for the factors. Uh, 1 will not work, okay? Uh, 2 is not going to work. Uh, let's look for higher factors. Uh, 504 divided by 9. 9 and 56. Uh, 9 and 56. Uh, negative 9, negative 56. Uh, no, that's 65. That will not work. Uh, let's do uh, uh, 12 and 42. 12 and 42. No, that didn't work either. 12 and 42. Uh, 7 and 72. Uh, 7 and 72. No. No. That wouldn't work. Uh, 6 and 84. 6 and 84. Uh, no. Uh, no. That wouldn't work. Fourteen and thirty-six. No. Uh, seven B squared minus fourteen B okay. Uh, Trying to find something that, trying to find something that works. Uh, Eighteen and twenty-eight is far off. Mm -hmm. Eighteen and twenty-eight will not work. Okay, so let me come closer. Uh, 8 and 63. There you go. 8 and 63, yeah. Let me, 8 and 63 will work. Minus 8 minus 63. Okay, so let's finish this up first. Uh, so, we now have... Seven this square minus eight d minus sixty three d plus seventy two equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so this will be we can do it uh, vertical method. I like mine doing doing my vertical method. 
Final 63 to 8 plus 72. So this is a uh, D 7D minus 8. And this will be minus uh, minus 9, 7D minus 8. There you go. So we now have that 7D minus 8 times D minus 9 equal to 0. You now do 0 product property. 0 product property. So 7D minus 8 is 0. Or D minus 9 is 0. So 7D is equal to 8. And D is equal to 8 over 7. Or D is equal to 9. Okay? We have already checked. We have already checked in the first method. Okay? And you see this second method. Is it not like killing a fly with a hammer? Okay, we solve one more question here, and then uh, and then we will stop this video here, and you just watch out for part two. This is gonna be part one, part one, so that the video will not be too long. Okay, so uh, let's solve one more. And then you watch out for part two. You watch out for part two. One shot one. One shot one. And then you watch out. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you watch out for part two. I will do part two right away. Okay. Now question seven. Uh, we have that C 3 over 4 is equal to 125. And this is like what we did, like question 1, right? I just chose it because it's pretty much straightforward. Okay. So we multiply both exponents by 4 over 3. Okay? C 3 over 4 times 4 over 3 equal to 125. 4 over 3. So this crosses out. So C will be, uh, this is cube root, this is cube root of 125 all raised to power 4. Okay. So C will be 5 raised to power 4. Right? 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. So C is uh, 125 times 5 is uh, 625. Okay, 6 to 5. So, say 6 to 5. That's the answer here. Alright, let's check it. Let's check. If we check it, we have that. Uh, our left hand side is C 3 over 4. Our right hand side is 125. So here we have 6 to 5 raised to power 3 over 4. So this means 4 root of 6 to 5 all cube. And this is 5 cube and this is 125. Okay? All right, we shall stop here for now to break this video into two because we still have more questions to solve. Uh, I'm going to post this part one in the first YouTube channel that I have. And I will post part two in the second YouTube channel, in another YouTube channel that I have. You can get to both. I will put this link on my website. You have it.